It was the middle of an autumn night when a persistent cry was nearing my ears. I woke up puzzled, seeing my three years old daughter yelling at me, What's wrong, Daddy? My wife's voice was accompanying her. Why are you sleeping on the floor? I recall replying, Why are you waking me up? Just let me sleep. What I was remembering is that several seconds ago, while walking towards the bathroom, I collapsed unconsciously, waking them up with a boom, and then a second time in front of their eyes, hitting my head on the floor. That is how I started my six months' journey into my own brain injury, and that is how my venture into the mind and AI began. Also, that was how my daughter got a catcher conversation starter. Each new person she was encountering was faced with the same rhetorical question. Do you know my daddy sleeps on floors and hits his head? I have always struggled with the main questions of life, those of origin, meaning, morality and destiny. And after experiencing the literal collapse of my own brain, I decided to explore AI in the hope of finding better answers. I figured that striving in the field that aspires to replicate and perfect the human mind is the closest you could get to the true nature of humanity. And isn't that the goal of AI? I believe that one of the greatest gifts that AI can bring us is that of rediscovering ourselves. The reason I said rediscovering is that each significant technological revolution placed us in front of a new mirror in which to search for the unique traits that define us. And these traits conjecture our identity based on our worldview, which holds our answers to those fundamental themes of origin, meaning, morality, and destiny. And today, I would like us to start to uncover this gift by considering three excursions into our identity which are uniquely shaped by AI. All of them have to do with the whys of our existence. There is a lot of focus nowadays on the what's and how's of AI, but it is inherently part of our nature to strive to reason from the why. We see this, for example, when we go beyond inferring that touching a flame burns us to asking why does it do that. In fact, this transition from sentience to consciousness is what makes all science possible. For the last century, AI was gradually endowed with the responsibility of evolving humanity to its next level of cognition and being. We expect AI to confirm this emerging naturalistic perspective on life, which deems humans as being composed of many evolutionary guided units of processing. It is true that in the last years, AI was able to conquer many human traits. A survey from Oxford University and Yale University presents researchers stating that AI will outperform humans in many key activities in the next 10 years. This includes translating languages, writing high school essays, composing the top pop songs, and even beating the best StarCraft player. In fact, just last month, AlphaStar from DeepMind, an AI system, was able to achieve the grand master level at StarCraft II. Hopefully, there is one such human trait which artificial intelligence is no match for, and that is natural stupidity. It seems that step by step, we take part in the disassembly of the unique traits that crowned us over the other species. On the other hand, we read about bold endeavors like the Mind Machine Project from MIT, where in spite of all the huge financial and technological resources, we weren't able to scratch the surface in replicating our mind and consciousness. Still, many researchers warn against the imminent acceleration of AI. Ray Kurzweil realizes that the exponential reality of technological development surpasses our linear intuition about the future. To understand this, if we take 30 steps linearly, we get to 30. If we take the same 30 steps exponentially, we get to 1 billion. At the other end of the spectrum, opposed to naturalism, we encounter the supernaturalistic perspective on life. In a recent interview, one of the greatest physicists of our time, Leonard Susskind, while discussing about questions out of reach of science, 
he particularly points to one. Is there an intelligence or a simulation with purpose out there underlying or being responsible of the whole thing? After a short dialogue, he continues with a statement which clearly presents the struggle with our origin. He says, questions need to be answerable to be real. Some philosophers would say that a question is not a question unless it is answerable. This question doesn't seem to me answerable by any known method, but it seems to me real. The gift that AI can bring us is to ask, what does it take to create humans in the hope of paying a better tribute to our origin? So we come to our second halt in the journey. The Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky depict Ivan telling a fictive dialogue in Seville between the Christ and the Grand Inquisitor. In the silence of his interlocutor, the Inquisitor utters a single fact on which he agrees with Christ. For the secret of man's being is not only to live, but to have something to live for. Meaning is inescapable to us, and it has, well, different meanings depending on who you talk to. Also, we humans seem to exhibit a continuous search for significance. You always remember that you are unique, just like everyone else. Someone noticed this by saying that it is like every time you find your meaning of life, they change it. There are at least three ways in which AI raises its voice over meaning. Firstly, if based on the naturalistic principles of life, artificial neural networks capable of self-awareness will someday be possible, should we ascribe consciousness to such machines? How should we deal with their desire or search for meaning? Secondly, how will our metamorphosis with AI impact our identity? One of the dilemmas that we have with our team in building implantable brain-machine interfaces for restoring damaged brain functions is how to do this without altering the patient's identity. We see the implications of this, for example, in the writings of the neurologist Oliver Sacks, who presents a case study of one of his patients who mistook his wife for a hat. Lastly, if AI will be able to replicate our traits, it will also be able to replace our jobs, and this will face us with a new meaning crisis. Jordan Peterson states that people with an IQ below 87 are well-suited for repetitive jobs. Still, our society has not addressed this, such jobs being almost non-existent. He goes on asking, what are those people supposed to do? I ask, how will we define meaning once there will be no jobs left for an IQ under 130? In summary, we see that our meaning is shaped by the humanization of AI, by our struggle in preserving our identity, and by the endeavors of our lives. As humans, we believe that we are worth something. That is why we are here today. And what we mean by something is that we instinctively ascribe to our lives more than just the physical. I mean, you can't just trust atoms. They always make everything up. And for those of you who think that nobody cares that you are worth something, try missing a couple of payments. We see this in our cravings, we see it in our daily lives, and we also see it in Lil Wayne's lines when he sings about the fear of searching for meaning in the dark. He says, you know I see dead people, I just tell them, get alive! The gift that AI can bring us is that of asking what does it mean to be human in the hope of satisfying our cravings for more? But our perception of meaning brings new implications at the level of morality. If we believe that AI will be able to attain the same level of consciousness as us humans, then we need to deal with the following philosophical questions. How should we humans treat such machines? Should we allow them to pursue their freedom and fulfillment? Are there any scenarios in which an AI should be able to defend itself and kill a human being? Should we be allowed to kill or destroy such machines? Can we even talk about killing something which doesn't have a breath? Or do we even need to redefine what a living thing is or mean? 
The gift that AI can bring us is that of asking, what does it mean to act as a human? So that we can reflect on our moral standing and on its long-term implications. We have opened our minds today to these three questions rephrased by AI. What does it take to create humans? What does it mean to be human? And what does it mean to act as a human? But merely having an open mind is nothing. The object of opening the mind, as of opening the mouth, is to shut it again on something solid. These are the questions which form the whys of our existence and which will carve our destiny as we learn to cohabitate with AI. And my hope in doing that is that we won't be so open-minded that our brains fall out. Most probably, some of us will arrive at different questions, conclusions than others. You can prove anything you want with cold illogical reason if you pick the proper postulates. That was Gregory Powell from iRobot. But part of our definitions should always be the commitment to care for one another and accept the differences between us. There is one last sci-fi novel story that I want to leave you with. On the eve of Armageddon, with the entire galaxy at war, seven pilgrims set forth on a final voyage to Hyperion, seeking answers for the unsolved riddles of their lives. Each carries a terrible secret and a desperate hope, and one may hold the fate of humanity in his hands. After realizing that no one has a clue why they were chosen for this mission, one of them says, it seems to me that our survival may depend upon our talking to one another. And then each pilgrim t starts to tell the story of his life. That is where we need to start these conversations. Neither of us has chosen to be here. Still, each story is important and it should be carefully listened to. The greatest gift that AI can bring us is that of rediscovering ourselves. And by rediscovering ourselves, we will rediscover each other and realize that we already had everything that we were looking for. That is another reason for which I said rediscovering. In Chesterton's words, there are two ways of getting home, and one of them is to stay there. The other is to walk around the whole world till you come back to the same place. And it is a healthy walk to come back to ourselves. Certainly it is not in vain, because yes, the best relation to our spiritual home is to be near enough to love it, but the next best is to be far enough away not to hate it. The greatest gift that AI could give us is that of rediscovering ourselves. Thank you.